American Horror Story season six has kicked off and everybody is having some kind of reaction to it. We obviously had to film this video before the premiere, but chances are fans that have stuck with the show are loving it. The current teases for this season have been pretty fantastic from the shadow stalker to the creepy baby. People love to sit down and comb through these clips over and over again, looking for any clues that can help them get hints for what's to come in the upcoming season. Actually, now thinking about it, fans love to sit down and sift through the past five seasons over and over again, me included, seeking out those connections that are meant to tie each season together. You see, show creator Ryan Murphy mentioned about a year ago that all the seasons are connected, but just how connected are they? Let's talk about it. Here's the obligatory spoiler warning in case you haven't watched the show, but you still want to learn something fun about the show, then you might get annoyed that the show is spoiled for you. There are people like that out there. Anyway, for the most part, the connections started becoming more apparent after Ryan Murphy had mentioned them in an interview. For me, it didn't really seem like the plan from the beginning, but it does add a fun Easter egg element to the series. I'm gonna kick it off with the most direct connections. We all fell in love with Pepper in season two, Asylum, but hello there, Pepper's in season four, Freak Show, look at that. Season four takes place a few years before season two, so we were able to see how Pepper made her way to the insane asylum Briarcliff, and we gotta say a nice hello to the soon to be possessed Sister Mary Eunice, fun. Keeping on with season four to two tie-ins, during the flashback to the snuff film that Rob Elsamar of her legs, we notice that the man doing the leg removal is the same young man who moved to Briarcliff to experiment on patients. Yep, it was confirmed that the actor John Cromwell was reprising his role as Hans Gruper or Dr. Arthur Arden. Side note, I thought they just de-aged James Cromwell, but it blew my mind that it was his kid. Hooray, father-son collaboration in a really messed up way. Moving on, remember that douche nozzle of a cop in season four, Jack Colquitt? He's the one who harassing Jimmy Darling, but he does have a cool hat and suit, so... That makes up for it. Anyways, that name should sound somewhat familiar because this nice gentleman right here investigating the murder house in season one goes by the name Jack Colquitt as well. Huh, we talk about time travel? Or is it just an unoriginal family name? Hmm, probably the latter. Also, that's a common name. Moving on, many people may have missed this connection between season three and season one, and now technically season five, but look at that name, Montgomery. Dr. Montgomery was performing illegal abortions in the basement of the murder house in 1922. That's season one. But then we met Madison Montgomery as a witch in Coven season three. This could be just a fun alliteration, but Maddie does say she hails from Los Angeles, which is where the murder house resides, so you tell me if it's a coincidence or if they're actually related. It might just be a coincidence. Oh, and in season five, we get a flashback with the doc again. Hi, Mr. Montgomery. It feels like season five has been the peak for tie-ins to previous seasons. For a moment, we got to say hello to Marcy, the realtor for Murder House back in season one. And we got a special visit from Queenie, the powerful witch from season three. She stopped off at the Treacherous Hotel, and I don't think it was a pleasant visit, if I'm being honest. Now, here comes the tie-in that, for me, is just confusing. For fans who don't remember, Sarah Paulson popped into season one as the TV psychic Billy Dean Howard very briefly. For those of you who cried out for more of that character for some reason, here she is in season five. You might be really confused because yes, Sarah Paulson is already playing a different character in that season. Hooray! I'm gonna take someone who's never seen this show and show them this episode and see if they can figure it out. There are also many locations that are brought up rather frequently. Los Angeles a couple of times, mainly for settings. Florida has been mentioned a few times as well. But the most intriguing of them all has to be Massachusetts. Cities are just the state itself have been mentioned many times throughout each of the seasons. So what could it mean? Possibly nothing. Or maybe something. Or maybe not. Who knows? But that's it for me. These are the most significant tie-ins I could find between each season that got me excited. Also a fun little tidbit. I was able to stumble upon this popular fan theory that connects each season to the circles of hell outlined in Dante's Inferno. Season one being lust or limbo, season two being fraud, coven being treachery, kind of makes sense. Season four being greed, especially from Elsa Mars's point of view, and season five being gluttony possibly because of all the addiction storylines. What are your thoughts on this fun fan theory? And what are your thoughts on all these connections? Do you think they mean anything or are the writers just having a little bit of fun? Let me know down below. Thank you guys for watching. Don't if you like this video, comment down below, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'm Sam, and I'll see you kids next time. Bye-bye. Ugh, -bye. Oh, I guess we have to go back to our live feed. Uh. We have just re received confirmation that the suspect is carrying a hostage. That hostage is a child. Why did he give me a parking ticket last Tuesday?